Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome, and thank you for being here. My name is Paul Vincent, and I'm the Executive Vice President of Workplace Practice at the National Safety Council, and I'll be your host for today. We have a fantastic speaker lineup this morning, and as some of exciting news to unveil about the future of workplace safety. However, before we begin today's program, I want to take a moment to thank each of you for taking time to join us, whether you're here at, in person at the National Press Club in Washington, DC, or virtually via our live stream. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Amazon for hosting this summit with us at NSC, and to our sponsors from Ansel, Intellifors, and Mega Intech all of whom helped make today possible. Now to today's agenda. After my brief introduction, NSC President and CEO Lorraine Martin and Amazon's Vice President of Worldwide Workplace Health and Safety, Heather McDougall, will deliver remarks about why we're here today and will also show brief video to further explain the issue on hand. Then, we're excited to bring you a panel of experts moderated by Sue Herrera from CNBC to discuss the leading workplace safety concerns. She will be joined by Sasha Johnson, Vice President of Corporate Safety at United Airlines, Michelle Garnajana, Executive Director of Corporate Health and Safety and Environment at Cummins, and Dor Dr. Gary Allreed, Program Director of SRI Ergonomics at The Ohio State University. We'll conclude with Lorraine taking the stage again to issue an important call to action to combat the biggest workplace safety concern. And as part of that, we'll share some key resources to assist employers in this effort. Now, to begin to, with today's program, everyone can agree Every employee has the right to work in an environment where their safety is valued and safety risks are evaluated and minimized. That's why we're gathered here today, to spur meaningful action in mitigating the biggest workplace safety issue, musculoskeletal disorders, or MSDs. Those in this room and online, our nation's top business leaders and safety innovators, probably know MSDs also known as ergonomic issues, affect nearly one quarter of the world's population and are the most common type of workplace injury. But folks may not realize is that for workers, MSDs are also one of the leading causes of disability, early retirement, and limitations to gainful employment. And for employers, they're a significant barrier to running an efficient business. Based on the latest data in 2020, workers in the US private sector experienced nearly 250,000 MSD injuries severe enough to cause missed workdays. And injuries caused by lifting heavy objects alone cost employers over $13 billion. Research shows that every dollar we spend on early MSD intervention generates twice as much the return or more. However, until recently, in many companies, these injuries have been under-recognized, under-addressed. This is part because MSDs are incredibly complex. As an illustration, diagnosis and treatment and subsequently prevention efforts for, say, a rotator cuff injury are going to be much different to how a back strain is addressed. Adding to the complexity of this issue is the unfortunate fact that MSDs disproportionately affect low-income workers and communities of color, two groups that are likely to have less access to healthcare resources. All of this together created the catalyst for action and was the genesis for the MSD Solutions Lab, a groundbreaking initiative that we launched last June with Amazon to tackle this important, wide-ranging workplace issue. Momentarily, I'm a, I'll hand over to our president and CEO, Lorraine Martin, to share the latest on what we're doing through the MSD Solutions Lab to address this issue. But first, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that this week marks the start of National Safety Week. Sorry, month. <laughs> NSC declared this observance back in 1996 to initially raise awareness of the leading safety and health risks 
and ultimately decrease the number of unintentional injuries and deaths in the United States. Today, more than 25 years later, National Safety Month encapsulates each of our Council's core pillars, workplace, roadway, and impairment, bringing greater visibility to the tools and resources to prevent hazards from the workplace to any place. What you're going to hear today illustrates our steadfast commitment to enhancing workers' safety, health, and well-being. As we like to say at NSC, safety is about continuous improvement. And we take great pride in meeting organizations wherever they are on their safety journey. So we're honored to have leaders and safety professionals like you who share our mission to create safer workplaces for all this month and every month. And we look forward to our continued collaboration. With that, please welcome Lorraine Martin, President and CEO of the National Safety Council. Uh, and thank you, Paul. And thank all of you for joining us here today for this summit. Um, as Paul just said, I am Lorraine Martin, President and CEO of the National Safety Council. And to start off with, I'd just like to provide a few words about the Council. NSC is America's leading nonprofit safety advocate and has been so for more than 100 years. Our more than 13,000 member companies and agencies represent more than 7 million employees at 41,000 U.S. work sites. As a mission-based organization, we work to eliminate the leading causes of preventable death and injury from the workplace to any place. We strive to create a culture of safety that enables all people to live their fullest lives. And preventing injuries before they happen is crucial to fulfilling that goal. It's because of this that we're so committed to addressing musculoskeletal disorders which includes ailments like rotor cuff, as we just heard about, back strains, carpal tunnel syndrome. And while there are no sirens associated with this issue, the impact of these prevalent injuries is no less alarming. And while the business impact of these injuries is undeniable, costing employers billions in lost wages, compensation, productivity, the human aspect of MSDs cannot be ignored. MSDs just don't go away at the end of a shift. They prevent people from doing everyday things, like helping a spouse un unload a car full of heavy groceries, walking a dog without chronic pain, or dancing at a loved one's family wedding. I encourage you all here with us today and over the line to just ponder that. MSDs also don't just impact the injured worker themselves. They also affect colleagues, friends, family members, and the communities that they live in. Take a, man, a moment just to imagine how much healthier and ultimately happier our communities could be if we eliminated workplace MSDs. For us, preventing these under-recognized injuries gets to the heart of our guiding philosophy. Every person has the right to live their fullest life on and off the clock. To this end, I want to thank Amazon for their generous corporate contribution and the support in helping to launch this groundbreaking program, the MSD Solutions Lab. And regardless of whether you represent a multinational global corporation or a small family-owned store, the MSD Solutions Labs is committed to ensuring that employees everywhere don't have to hurt to go to work. It's a tall task and one that's never been addressed at this scale before. But here at NSC, we like to take on the top safety challenges, and we're already starting to move the needle by engaging key stakeholders, conducting research, innovating and finding solutions, and scaling those results so that all workplaces can benefit. And today, we are thrilled to unveil a monumental step forward in this quest, the MSD Pledge. The MSD Pledge is born out of the MSD Solutions Lab and is an industry call to action, the first of its kind, that unites organizations in our mission to eliminate workplace MSDs. Through this pledge, we aim to galvanize a global movement across industries to improve workplace safety through technology and innovation. More specifically, we're calling on organizations everywhere through the pledge to protect their most valuable asset, their workers. And we do this by several things. 
analyzing the causes of MSD injuries across operations and investing in solutions that reduce risk to workers, leveraging best practices and sharing learning and countermeasures that expand on innovations to improve safety practice, building an organizational culture that values and promotes safety excellence, transparency, accurate reporting, and holds everyone at every level of the organization accountable for a safe and healthy workforce. And above all, today, committing to a significant reduction in MSD injuries. We know that leaders and innovators in this room and online today value their employees' well-being more than anything. But the fact remains that MSDs are still the most pervasive workplace injury, which is why we're asking everyone to sign the pledge today. Together, our goal is to create safer outcomes for millions of workers worldwide and reduce MSD risks and subsequent injuries by 25% by 2025. In addition to leveraging free information and new safety innovations to help reduce MSD risks, one of the hallmarks of the pledge is the MSD Solutions Index, which will be made to, available to all organizations that sign the pledge. Through the index, organizations will be able to chart their performance against the pledge commitments and industry best practices over time. Along with improving the lives of millions of workers on the job site and beyond, these insights will yield information employers can leverage to improve their bottom line, strengthen workforce retention, and reduce absenteeism. This effort will serve a myriad of industries and sectors, each presenting unique MSD challenges. We can all agree that healthy businesses start with safe workplaces, and this pledge represents a crucial step forward in addressing the problems for all workers. Importantly, safety has always been a collaborative endeavor. At NSC, we have a proud history of convening our unparalleled network of safety leaders to address workplace safety issues and create scalable safety programs through tools, training, and the translation of complex concepts. Our latest initiative, the MSD Pledge, is no exception. We're encouraging everyone from organizations small and large to join us at the table and address workplace MSDs. So far, more than 15 of the nation's top employers and leading business associations have already signed the pledge, from Amazon to Cummins to United to John Deere to myself, um, and we're gonna hear that this is just the beginning. Together, we can improve workplace safety, reduce MSD risks, and enhance the well-being of all workers so everyone can do the things they love with the people they love. Thank you. And now I would like to turn it over to Heather McDoodle, the Vice President in Worldwide Workplace Health and Safety at Amazon. Heather? Good morning, and thank you, Lorraine. Uh, and again, thank you to everyone who's joined us today for this exciting announcement. Safety is integral to everything that we do at Amazon, and we know how important it is to our colleagues at other companies across all industries. Last year at Amazon, we invested 300 million in safety improvements and grew our team of safety professionals to over 8,000. And last year, we uh, launched this partnership with NSC to invent new ways to prevent MSDs, and we're excited to be here today to take that next step. We know that it takes more than monetary investments to achieve safety excellence. It takes an unwavering commitment to relentlessly monitor progress and to continuously improve. At Amazon, our safety approach can be broken down into three categories that make up what we call the Amazon safety flywheel. Investment, innovation, and improvement. We are dedicated to constantly learning and growing, which is why we're so grateful to all those gathered here today. Together, we can share best practices, uh, new resources, and effective approaches to reducing MSDs. We know that investing in safe worker or safe workplaces is not just good business. It's the right thing to do for our people and nothing is more important than the health and safety of our employees. This pledge will foster relationship building with forward thinking 
industry leaders, and allow us to share successes and discover new ways to innovate on behalf of all our employees. Innovations like having new employees wear devices so they can learn uh, from their first day on the job how to safely lift or bend. Or implementing a job rotation program where employees can move among jobs that use different muscle tendon groups to alleviate fatigue from repetitive motion and to help reduce MSD risk. But reducing MSDs is more complex than um, simply training employees on how to work safely. We need to do more to prevent injuries. So our buildings and equipment must be designed, purchased, and invented with safety in mind above all else. It's also critically important to listen to our employees. At Amazon, we are committed to doing that often and doing it well. We value honest feedback um, and we use this to continually improve our work sites. Every employee must have confidence in the safety of their work environments and while we know that we have work to do, we are striving um, to improve each day and dedicating uh, ourselves to delivering that sense of security and safety for our employees. This pledge is a commitment by us and all of our partners to transparently share knowledge and collectively work toward safety excellence. So together, we can all improve work environments to keep employees safe. So we look forward to being a part of this pledge, to delivering on its goals, and to working together with others on this really important initiative. So thank you. Thank you, Heather and Amazon, for being such great partners in our collective effort to solve this issue. Now that you've heard from us, next we want to share a video so you can see how MSDs affect workers and, and the lives they live. given time in an Amazon facility, you could have anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 associates in the building. So it's a lot of moving parts uh, and a lot of people to make that happen. I am the first level employee and I work in the damage department. It's very hands-on and you're using multiple parts of your body at the same time. I work in the transportation department. I'm in charge of inspecting the trucks and the trailers. Safety is a priority. The work and well program we have over here at Amazon, it helps us be more mindful of how to perform our tasks more safely. There are different items in the working well area that targets different parts of the body that we can use and just get our bodies warmed up for our shift. Before I come to work, I always stretch. But if you're on your feet, it's nonstop. Pay attention to what you do, huh? so we can prevent anything. You can't do nothing if you are not safe. I've been with United for 32 years. The last thing you want to do is have to worry about an injury when you go home. That's why it's so important to be mindful of how you're positioning your body when you're performing your different tasks at work. If these aircraft doors weigh over 200 pounds, and just by positioning your body a certain way or using gravity can make such a big difference on how you open and close an aircraft door. We break it down here at the airport as above the wing, which is our CS agents upstairs that service the customers face to face. And those of us below the wing, just like it says, we are below the wing and handle everything from the cargo loading to the bags, to the movement of the aircraft. It's a million moving parts. Safety is the key. That's our number one core value here at United. My job is to oversee the airport operations on the outside of the airport. Working on the ramp is really intense, especially when it comes to the heavy loading and making sure that the workers are safe. Safety is our number one priority, and that's what the safety action team is here for, to make sure that we take those preventative measures. Running a safe operation is also running an efficient operation. They're not mutually exclusive. The employees obviously are our number one asset here at uh, United Airlines. So that's the main reason 
Safety is our number one core value. We don't want anybody to get hurt. You have to be diligently aware of what you're doing with your body, how you're moving so that you can stay safe and healthy. We all have to depend on each other. Every department is important in its own way. Injuries impact your life. The goal of all of us as safety advocates is to have everybody go home safe. We care about the safety of our associates. Safety is personal. Safety is very much personal. We want you to be able to go home in the same condition that you walk through the door. I love my job. I'm going to be a lifer. <laughs>
these things don't happen overnight. You know, at United, we're not only looking at trying to fix the workplace today, but as we build the workplace of tomorrow and 10 years from now, how do we make sure we're putting in the improvements and building in that safety at the beginning? Uh, because to Gary's point, this takes a long time. I would also say that you really need to have frontline buy-in. Uh, you know, as that video indicated, the safety advocates at United are really our best ambassadors for safety in the field. They need to help raise awareness every day on this issue. And so that needs to be a big part of your strategy. And then finally, I would say that data, you need to go where the data is telling you your biggest issues are, because that also makes it a realistic and uh, you know a realistic strategy that your employees can really connect with because they indicate that you're really focusing on uh, the biggest workplace safety risks. Michelle, both you and Sasha um, are at very large scale companies. So if I don't know what MSD reduction is, give me some critical uh, points that you think are really important for someone who doesn't know about MSD reduction. Sure. Um, I, I would say a couple of things that, that come to mind immediately um, is employee engagement or the overall culture. So um, Sasha and Gary both mentioned leadership and uh, buy-in and that's, that's foundational, right? You have to have that. But um, it's equally important that you have employees who are engaged and that they um, understand they've been trained, they have knowledge on what MSDs are and er what ergonomics is in general, um, and that they're a part of the process from uh, the risk assessment page uh, through uh, solution development. Um, mm -hmm. A second point I think is, is extremely important is around risk identification and, and reduction. So just relentlessly driving a culture of identifying risk and really um, understanding, being able to measure it um, and identifying solutions to help mitigate or eliminate that risk. All right, so Gary, I'm gonna go back to you. Can you be specific as to what type of programs and, and initiatives have been particularly effective for your clients over at SRI Ergonomics? Uh, well, I think that um, uh, Michelle and Sasha have um, already addressed part of that uh, and, and that really, uh, I think in addition to the participation among uh, employees and getting them involved at various levels of the MSD reduction effort. Uh, the other part is just showing respect for uh, these employees and understanding that they're the experts at their jobs and they know it better than anyone else. Um, and they often have the solutions, but they've never been asked. And so we can gain quite a bit of knowledge by engaging them, showing them the respect that they deserve and, and asking them for, for input. Michelle, I see you nodding your head there. Um, can you elaborate on that? And also, you know, we now kind of have a hybrid workforce. Some people are coming back to the office. Others are not, they're staying at home, yet MSD reduction is important on both of those levels. So how do you bring employees along on this journey when you're dealing with a hybrid workforce? That's a great question. And I was nodding as Gary was speaking. So I, I think that what he mentioned is just um, so critically important that um, employees really are your experts here, right? They know the job better than anyone. And um, if you don't include them in the process and you design um, around them, or you know, you put something in place that um, you haven't collaborated with them on, then it's likely it won't be used, right? Or, or potentially could bring a different risk um, to the table. So I just, I fully agree. I think the more you can engage um, your, your employees who do the day-to-day -day work, the, the more important that is. Um, and for the work from home environment and the hybrid, it, it is bringing an entirely new focus on office ergonomics. Um, so we, I think uh, historically um, industry has, has been pretty good about understanding what to do in an office environment when you have a standard um, uh, workstation design and set up and everything's the same. So this work from home is really a completely um, different platform to consider. So people are working from home desks, some may be working from their couches, uh, you just don't know. So uh, it's really become um, even a bigger focus to make sure that work from home employees understand the risk factors related to their um, workstation design and how they can use simple steps um, to enhance the ergonomics and reduce the risk for MSDs at home. Sasha, do you agree with that? And, and in particular, I know United has a number of initiatives 
including a new fleet of planes that they're going to be rolling out. So you have a lot on your plate coming up, obviously. Uh, but what specific initiatives has United put in place that have worked effectively or very well for your company? Yeah, so I would say the biggest one, so we have new ergonomics training that we're rolling out this year to Michelle's point that tackles the folks that are living and working at home and not coming into the office, figuring out how to set up your home office. But then also, as you saw in that video, we have a program that really is trying to emphasize uh, to our workers in the field that they are industrial athletes. They need to get ready to work. You cannot show up cold to throw 40 bags onto an airplane. We're gonna carry over hundred million bags at United Airlines this year. We need to make sure that those employees that are doing that tough work are actually ready to receive those bags and, and do it successfully. So we've got this new ergonomics training that we're, you know, it's both in-person and computer-based training we're rolling out this year. The other thing that United does that no other airline does, but is a best practice um, both in healthcare and uh, in the railroads is isokinetic strength testing. So all of our ramp workers, and we are going to be hiring thousands of them over the next five years, have to actually demonstrate their physical ability to not only lift heavy loads, but also that they have the muscular stamina to do so. And that test actually really does help make sure that the individual stays healthy at work, uh, but then also their peers stay healthy because we need to make sure that everyone out there is able to do the job. So let's talk about some of the challenges. Obviously, you're all on board on reducing MSDs and um, in corporations big and also in smaller companies. So Gary, what challenges have your clients encountered and how have you helped them work through them? Uh, well, there's been a couple that seem to um, rise to the surface. Um, one is that a lot of companies have trained um, uh, their safety professionals on how to evaluate jobs, but where they're often lost is where are the solutions? Um, where can they get ideas on how to make these jobs safer? And the ergonomics community does provide um, a lot of resources, uh, whether through trade organizations or conferences or other types of um, uh, journals and other information that um, can assist in that. And I think that this um, consortium really that uh, the National Safety Council is putting forth is another excellent way that companies can trade best practices and benchmark uh, with one another. Um, and briefly, I think one of the uh, second challenges is that Often safety professionals are um, trained in how to identify and eliminate safety related uh, injuries, which tend to be acute injuries. And that is eliminate those um, entirely so that employees don't encounter those. In ergonomics, it's different. You know, you can lift heavy things and you can do things repetitively, but what the science is telling us is that we need to know how much is too much. How much is too much lifting, too much weight? And the, the mindset to address MSDs is a bit different than how uh, it's traditionally addressed when it comes to safety. Michelle, what challenges has Cummins uh, had to deal with? How did you work through it? Um, and you know, did you have a lot of challenges or was it fairly easy to put in um, these er ergonomic safety measures? Yeah, um, I think one of the most recent challenges that we've seen related to MSDs and ergonomics has really been related to the impacts from COVID. Um, you know, the labor shortages that we've seen, the supply chain constraints, it's really resulted in, you know, having fewer employees available, having a lot of new employees in the work environment, um, and in some cases, more overtime, which means you're going to have uh, more repetitive motion, more fatigue related issues, for example. So, the key that we found is really to ensure um, that the training is solid and that we're communicating as much as possible to the employees about the impacts of um, ergonomic risk factors and fatigue and what we can do to counteract that. So encouraging more stretching, um, more frequent breaks and more toolbox talks and discussions about, about ergonomics and, um, and MSDs in general. So I, I think that that's probably the, the most recent um, challenges that we've seen. And we've just tried to uh, be flexible and, and adapt as we go, but ensure that we're bringing the employees with us. And Sasha, I think you would probably agree with most of what Michelle just said, but can you add to it in terms of, because you're in very different industries. Can you add to it, Sasha, um, 
what United has found particularly challenging? Yeah, so I would say that coming out of COVID has been hard. The increase in operation has been difficult um, just from the, you know, everyone kind of getting used to working at that pace again, which can lead to more injuries. What we have really done is doubled down on communication. We've had several safety blitzes associated with injuries, just making sure that all employees know that they need to follow standard operating procedure, because if they do, that will help keep them safe. Um, if they lift in the right way that we've trained them to, if they do the job as they're supposed to, that that really does lead to both a safe and efficient operation. I think the other challenge that I would sort of talk about is technology, because we do believe technology, especially at the scale that we're talking, could be a huge benefit uh, to reducing MSDs, but it's finding the technology that works and that can be implemented and brought into the operation at the scale that we've needed to. So we've been trying to, we've been trying out and piloting new belts that actually raise, uh, you know, the, the conveyor belts higher for our employees. So they're not twisting, pulling and throwing bags. But the challenge with that has actually been the change management that Michelle talked about a little bit. We bring it in, we've had to make sure that we double down on that change management part of the strategy because once people start to use it, they really like it. But a lot of our employees have been doing the same thing for a long time. And so making sure that they understand why the technology is important, the benefit that can bring to their lives and to the way that they work, um, we've been focused a lot on that. And I promise never to overpack a bag so it's not too heavy <laughs> for anyone. See, it has to a real world impact, Sue. <laughs> no, it does, right? It does. You know, what, what has been the most surprising thing to all three of you on this journey? Gary, I'm going to start with you because, you know, we even the best of intentions and you go through the program and you implement everything perfectly, there's always something unexpected. There's always a surprise in there. What, what's been the most surprising to you? I, I think the, one of the things is that um, often uh, engineering groups or safety professionals come up with terrific solutions that on the surface really um, can reduce risk and, and make jobs safer, but employees won't use them. And, um, and, and that's often because the employees don't feel like uh, it's useful to them, that the solution is actually usable, um, or they may not want to use it uh, for various reasons, as, as Sasha mentioned, in terms of that change management issue. And so, uh, again, I think that one of the themes here has been the, the importance of engaging uh, the workforce. And if uh, often if the workforce is a part of the um, development of solutions are going to be more likely to accept it and, and find that. And so um, it, it's sometimes it's surprising to me to see some really interesting equipment out there that's collecting dust because it just was not not usable, even though on the surface, you would think it would make the job a lot safer. Yeah, Michelle, you talked a little bit about that, but you know, I think Gary hit on a very important point, convincing the employee that um, you're doing this for their benefit. It's also, of course, for the company's benefit because MSDs cost billions of dollars a year in companies large and small, but sometimes employees are a little defensive and you know that they don't understand why these uh, programs are being put in place. How do you overcome that? That's a great question. Um, I think one of the best um, mechanisms that we found is really starting those conversations with the employees as early as possible. Um, so before you're even thinking about what type of solution, really sitting down with the employees, reviewing the job from end to end and asking for their input on, you know, what portions of the job are difficult for them and, and um, what are their concerns. And occasionally there may be uh, a response that comes up that's not related to ergonomics, right? Maybe there's a safety issue, but making sure that you're listening to that feedback and addressing it um, and help asking for their help in the design of addressing it, whether it's large or small, um, I think the more little wins you can, you can put in place, um, the better. As soon as, when they understand that you're there to make their life easier, um, and to understand and, and build from, from their knowledge, um, it's a lot easier to get buy-in from, from the team. And Sasha, how do you overcome employee resistance or, or perhaps suspicion or you know, however you want to phrase it? How do you get the team, everybody on the team on board? Yeah, so I think I would go back to the safety ambassadors that we talked about and the safety advocates that United has in the field. 
you know, I can go out and talk to people about wearing hearing protection and lifting the right way and stretching. And, you know, they agree and they, they hear me, but it's a lot different when their peer or someone who has thrown bags for their career or um, has worked uh, above the wing comes and tells them that if you keep lifting and twisting like that, you're going to have a problem a few years from now or a problem a few weeks from now. And so that's why uh, a big element of our MSD strategy is making sure that we're training trainers. And those trainers are, are people who are well respected in the work groups where we have the highest risk of injury because frankly, the training just sticks better when it comes from them. You know, the MSD pledge uh, that Lorraine talked about earlier and that Paul has also talked about has a pretty ambitious goal by the year 2025 a 25% reduction in MSD related injuries. What do you all see, and, and Gary, I'm gonna start with you as, and please be as specific as possible, uh, the two or three most critical elements of success that com companies can implement to help achieve that 25% reduction in MSD injuries? Uh, one, I think, is the importance of education about what are some symptoms of musculoskeletal disorders so that the individuals, the employees can understand when it may be something that can develop into uh, an MSD uh, that may increase um, you know, incident rates or um, be se quite severe. Um, and how does that compare to a symptom of a, a muscle injury that tends to heal really quickly and, and isn't so problematic. And so uh, one of those is just, uh, I think, really important education about um, what is that injury process that uh, occurs when someone develops an MSD. Uh, and that's important, I think, for many parts of the body. However, for, for back injuries, often there aren't symptoms at all. And so that's another reason why that education uh, is so important. Um, to uh, provide the employees at a level that really makes sense for them. Sasha, what are the two or three most critical elements of success that companies can take from, uh, from a United that has huge scale? And even if they're a small company, what two or three things can they put in place? So I can tell you what we're focusing on. I mean, we're focusing on making sure that we have really good data to help guide what we're doing. And so that has meant pulling back some of our safety reporting and really understanding how people are doing it. Are, do we have the right systems in place that are talking to each other so we can identify risk? We really had to put resources into that and we're still not where we wanna be. That's a long-term challenge, but do, by doing that and focusing on that, we think our injury reduction strategy will be more effective because we'll be able to focus our resources better. The other place where we've put a lot of emphasis is on safety promotion. That's a big part of aviation is both voluntary reporting so people can tell us what they're seeing in the field so we can make, uh, make adjustments and reduce safety risk, but also getting the word out and driving home not only awareness about MSD, but also the personal responsibility elements of safety. We can't be everywhere all the time telling people how to be safe. So making sure that we've got the right safety culture in place to promote that personal responsibility to stay safe has been another critical element that we've been focused on. And Michelle, give me two or three elements that you think are applicable to companies across the board and in terms of scale as well that have worked for you at Cummins. Sure. And um, I also want to say uh, we at Cummins are just so proud to be part of this initiative. Um, and, and I want to thank NSC and Amazon for such bold reduction goals across the board. I think it's an incredible initiative and effort. Um, one thing that I would say uh, that has been really important for us is understanding our best practices and horizontally deploying those best practices across um, the globe within Cummins. And I think one of the really important uh, pieces to the puzzle that the MSD Solutions Lab plays is being able to do that um, on an even larger scale. So across industries, across organizations, small and large, being able to, to look at best practices and look at various solutions to, to risk factors and being able to learn, lessons learned from other organizations, uh, what's worked, what hasn't worked. Um, I think that's just um, an incredibly valuable opportunity um, that this MSD Solutions Lab brings with it. Um, mm -hmm. I would also say, I sound like a broken record, but the, the continued focus on employee engagement and making sure there's collaboration with the employees, um, that you're encouraging early reporting of any, of any um, concerns or risk factors or issues at a workstation. And then the other piece is risk, risk reduction. 
So just relentlessly focusing on reducing risk and measuring that risk and using the data to help you prioritize your mitigation efforts um, and having a sustainable process. Sasha, if I could go, both you and Michelle have touched on data and so has Gary. Um, you're a large company, you know, and Cummins is a large company. So you have access to systems that may allow you to gather that data. But if you're a smaller company, how do you get the data that helps you make that decision? Yeah, I think part of what we have found, and this is something that we're working on at United right now, is figuring out how do we have a consistent root cause analysis of something that's happened or risks in the workplace and making sure that you're investigating things in, this, in the same way wherever you are. So you're collecting the same information. And you can do that on a piece of paper. It doesn't need to be in a in a, in a fancy uh, data system like United might have. And that helps you identify the trends that you were seeing. Uh, and that's really what we've had to focus on is making sure that you know the, the airport in Iowa, if there's an injury, that they're inputting it in in the same way that they're doing it in Chicago so that we can see, oh, wow, this particular type of equipment, we're having the same issue repeatedly. We need to focus our attention there. And so I would encourage people to look at more of the practice of that data gathering and of that analysis and making sure there's consistency and detail associated with it as opposed to the specific system because everybody's got different systems. But that practice and that consistency is really important to help you get those trends which will help lead to better and safer solutions. Okay, we're almost out of time. Some final thoughts from all three of you. Gary, I'll start with you. Then Michelle, I'll go to you and we'll finish up with Sasha. Gary? You know, I, I think we've heard so much in the news uh, about uh, turnover and that employees um, um, these days just seem to um, be much more willing to go to another job if they're um, not satisfied with what they're in. And I think ergonomics and MSD reduction really plays a huge role in there is because if we can make our jobs um, safer and employees feel more productive, they're not aching as much when they go home, they're not getting hurt, they're a lot more likely to, um, you know, stay in that job. And that may not show up in terms of uh, injuries that the uh, employee ha uh, employer has to record, but it's going to certainly show up in the savings uh, that it would otherwise take to uh, recruit and hire and train new employees. Michelle, you're next. Final thoughts? Thank you. Yeah, um, you know, ergonomics and MSDs are something that affect everyone, uh, whether it's in the workplace or in your everyday life. Um, across every industry, large organizations, small organizations, it's literally a part of life. Um, so I think it's just uh, extremely important um, that we have strategies on how to make improvements in those areas. And I really think that the MSD Solutions Labs will be able to help organizations on all sides of the, or all parts of that spectrum. And as Cummins, you know, we appreciate the fact that we can learn um, from the networking and benchmarking and best practices, but we're also here to share what we have learned and the processes and systems that we have. So we're just excited about the, this, this um, global approach. Sasha, you get the last word. Yeah, I would just say that, you know, no industry can or accept injuries anymore. I mean, not that they ever could before, but uh, this type of injury is too important to people's lives. Um, you know, set aside the company livelihood. Um, we as a nation have a responsibility uh, to, to address this. And I'm excited to that United is a part of this MSD Solutions Lab to not only try to bring, bring back best practices to United and to the airline industry, but beyond. So thanks for being, thanks for letting us be here. It has been a pleasure to have all of you with me today. Thank you much, uh, so much for your insights. I know it's been very helpful and it'll be helpful to companies large and small and in all walks of life in this, uh, in this very tight labor market. So thank you so much. I think it's been a great panel. Thank you so much for having me. And Lorraine, I'm gonna turn it back to you. I know there's a lot more in the program this afternoon. Well, a huge, a huge thank you to Sue, Gary, Sasha, and Michelle. That was just very, very helpful for us to get the context of what this really means, not only for your companies, your organizations, but for your employees, um, and really expanding our view on this important issue. I hope for everyone here that's with us today that it's clear at this point that MSD prevention is a very critical focus, not only for the National Safety Council, 
um, but for all of us. MSDs aren't just a health and safety problem or issue. Preventing these injuries before they occur really should be the core focus of every industry and every manager. Addressing MSDs is a crucial step in creating safer and high-functioning, innovative organizations of tomorrow. For the past 100 years, NSC has been at the forefront of tackling whatever the biggest safety challenges were that were facing our nation. From wearing seat belts to most recently addressing the COVID-19 safety practices, so it's really only fitting that we lead the way on this front as well. But we know it will take many more great partners like all of you with us here today to tackle this critical safety challenge. And it's why we're asking everyone to stand for safety with us and join the MSD pledge today. To that end, I would like to invite Heather and our representatives from our event sponsor, Sean Sweeney of Ansel Intellifors and Dr. Kevin Ortez from Mega Intech, who are here with us today in Washington, D.C., to join us up front here so that we can officially sign the MSD pledge uh, with all of you watching here today. So please join me up front. A great start for everything. So on behalf of NSC and Amazon team, I want to give a huge thank you to our sponsors and everyone for taking time to learn more about the pervasive issue of MSDs. And most importantly, taking a first step in our collective effort to mitigate these injuries. And to others who haven't signed the MSD pledge, don't delay. You can do so by visiting nsc.org slash MSD pledge or email our MSD Solutions Lab team directly at msdsolutionslab at nsc.org. For any organizations thinking of signing the pledge, we encourage you to do so by June 17th. If you sign before that date, your organization will be featured in a full page ad in the New York Times designed to raise awareness about this initiative and celebrate the founding member organizations that have signed on. We are also hosting a new member orientation at the end of June, and we look forward to seeing all of our pledge signers there. Our goal is to create a safer outcomes for millions of workers worldwide and reduce MSD risk and subsequent injuries by 25% by 2025, as you've heard. And you can help play a part in this. We know the folks in this room and online care deeply about the safety and well-being of their workers, but we realize you may still have questions. So our team will send helpful information to all of today's attendees and about the MSD risks and the business costs, as well as top frequently asked questions to help guide MSD prevention conversations within our respective organizations. We will also be hosting a town hall this summer on Thursday the 14th of July at 1.30 p.m. Eastern to continue this conversation on this important topic. 
So be on the lookout for all of this, and please mark your calendars for the Town Hall. In the meantime, thank you all for your continued support. Uh, with that, we conclude the day's formal presentations. We're going to move to a media Q&A portion of the summit. We'll start with questions from um, media and in the room, and then we'll move to those watching online. So I'd like to invite um, Lorraine and Heather back up to take any questions. And um, thank you once again. Please, Heather. OK. So uh, I'm going to kick it off with a question. I just can't, you just can't take the microphone away from me. That's the thing. So, um, Lorraine, now that we've launched the MSD pledge with Amazon and several of the nation's leading employers, uh, what's next for MSD Solutions Lab in the effort to solve this issue? Well, thank you, Paul. Um, and as Paul just outlined, there are, are some things and resources that will be made available to all interested parties. But the most important thing after today is to, to find more folks to join the cause, not only to sign the pledge, uh, but to be part of our advisory council, which we stood up some time ago and has an incredible uh, set of experts up, up on that. Um, over the next little bit, everyone who signs the pledge will start to use this MSD Solutions Index, and that will help us sort of uh, benchmark where everyone is, enable them to have a path of how they're going to be Im improving their uh, capabilities, and then, of course, uh, sharing best practices. We are also going to uh, use some of the resources we have to have an innovation challenge. So we'll have some sort of hackathon type activities with, with players that have technology that can help with MSD solutions, test them out, see how they can be best utilized. Uh, we'll also be doing some grants for universities and, and other types of things uh, so that we can really find the most promising solutions to bring to bear. Um, and all of those things, again, will be made available to those that are supporting uh, the initiative and coming on the journey with us, uh, as well as all of the webinars and training and resources that Paul just out outlined. Thank you. We will now open it up to questions for media that are watching virtually. So if you have any questions, please include them in the ask a question box below the video window and we will get to them shortly. So the first, first question we have is also for Lorraine. And that is, why has no one sounded the alarm on musculoskeletal disorders until now and how important is this issue? Yeah, thank you for that question. And, and it is a little surprising that we haven't sounded the alarm, but part of it is because these are progressive injuries. These are things that, as we've said before, you can um, get while you're at work or at home, anytime you're putting your body um, into a stress position that perhaps is not healthy for it. So yeah, one in four humans on the planet, every, one in four of everybody who is here is going to have an MSD incident in their life at this point, and we can do better than that. So we are using this effort to call that alarm. Um, some of what we heard from our panelists, from Gary, Sasha, and, and Michelle, is that these things sometimes sneak up on you. They aren't the big, the big event in your environment that you never want to have that, that you know, is, is horrific. Um, these are things that come slowly and, and sometimes over time. And so sometimes it's harder to really raise that flag, which is why we've come together here today to say if this is the most prevalent injury across all industries for all workers, and one in four humans is going to experience one, we better have a call to arms and we better start working this in a much more coordinated and collaborative fashion. This next question is for Heather and it's from EHS Today. According to a Strategic Organizing Center report, Amazon warehouse workers suffered serious injuries at twice the rate of other warehouse companies. Is there a cultural shift necessary among Amazon management, such as putting more of an emphasis on worker safety and less on productivity quotas? Well, let me start by saying that it's a, a misconception that Amazon has quotas. Uh, we do not. Uh, but we are committed to ensuring that performance expectations and safety operations can coexist. So, and looking at our 21 data, 
Uh, we, we did see an increase in our injury rates. Um, I do not think that that is uh, unique to Amazon. That's something we saw across um, other companies with a similar operational footprint in 21. 21 was a big challenge for many of us. Um, we hired more than 600,000 employees during 21 to meet the demands of the pandemic. And uh, like other companies, we saw an increase um, during this time as we onboarded many new employees. But uh, we recognize that we have work to do and we are not where we want to be. Um, and we will not be satisfied until we achieve excellence when it comes to safety. So happy to be a part of this initiative. Um, look forward to some of the uh, initiatives that we've already started at Amazon that I mentioned in my opening comments and also look forward to this partnership and what we can all achieve working together. All right, this next question is for Lorraine and that is how will you measure success and monitor progress? Yeah, that's a great question, thank you. And the index is, is, is a big piece of that. So um, it will, as I mentioned, enable us to kind of baseline everyone who does uh, sign up for the pledge and then watch how things are evolving, not only in um, how their reduction in MSDs, technology adoption, um, understanding the cultural aspects, and we heard a lot of that from our panelists because it is about both change management, adoption, uh, employee voice. Um, so the index is really going to be a, a great way for us to monitor that. We've set a pretty, you know, audacious and aggressive but achievable goal of saying we want to reduce MSDs in the workplaces um, that we all support. And so monitoring that will also be one. One of the challenging pieces of data, and at the National Safety Council, we, we depend on data for nearly everything we do is that sometimes it lags. So when we're waiting to get data from Department of Labor or BLS, it takes a little bit of time to get that. But we'll do our best with the companies that are on the pledge to track them along their progress so that we can really see that we are reducing uh, injuries in the workplaces that have, have come, come to partner with us. This next question is for Sasha from United. So Sasha, please tell us some things you've done uh, at your company that show your investment in reducing workplace injuries? Well, I would start off by just talking about um, the clinics that we have on site at United. We have clinics at O'Hare, uh, Newark, Houston, and Guam. Uh, those are opportunities for our employees to not only seek medical care, but also physical therapy. Um, so those are multi-million dollar investments. We'll be hopefully building another clinic um, in Denver. I would also point to um, the ergonomics training that we have just put forward, uh, which was another massive enterprise effort to raise awareness uh, and you know, educate and also give people tips on how to stay safe. Um, so I would start with those investments um, just to demonstrate our commitment to safety, health, and wellness. All right, this next question is for Heather and it's from the Seattle Times. Two questions related to Amazon. One, shareholders and workers have been calling on Amazon to reduce injuries at its warehouses. How would you address criticisms that this pledge isn't doing enough, taking enough action? Two, does Amazon plan to slow down the pace of work at its warehouses? Okay. Uh, well, this partnership does include some very real steps. So we will continue to prioritize the health and safety of our employees. And not only have we signed this pledge, we have previously announced that we are taking on a bigger goal, and that is to reduce MSDs at Amazon by 40% um, from our 2020 baseline to 2025. So we are, again, always looking at how we can, can take additional steps to improve safety at Amazon and maintain um, safety as something that is a top priority while at the same time finding that, um, that, that operations and safety can coexist. Okay, this next question is for Dr. Allred. So, uh, what seems to be a common thread you've seen that employers need to be doing better when it comes to reducing MSDs? Um, well, there, there are probably a lot of things uh, that, that can be done. I, I think one of the um, important things to think about is that 
humans are not robots. You know, we, uh, the human body is an incredible system that can withstand a lot of wear and tear, um, that can heal after a lot of work, but there are limits. And, and that's what we are focused on is understanding how employees can work safely and productively uh, within the limits of the human body. And, um, you know, too often I have done work in companies where they believe that, um, you know, doing some stretching before the job uh, is going to uh, protect their employees from injury. And it's, it's not the case. You know, there are um, a number of engineering controls. There are a number of other type of employee um, improvement and wellness uh, goals that need to be set. So it, it's a multifactorial approach that's needed to uh, address and reduce these type of injuries. If, if I could just add something Gary said, I mean, when we talk about uh, another thing that United is doing is really looking at technology solutions to see you know, to Gary's point about it being a multifaceted um, effort. And a lot of these technologies are helpful. We're looking at the power stove transfer belt, some other things to help sort of reduce that lifting and pulling. But to Gary's point, it's also the size of the bags. It's also educating customers and consumers about what they should be bringing um, on the aircraft. And it's also getting um, employees to really want to use these things. How do you implement them into the operation and bring them into the operation um, without causing other potential risks as well. Also, one of the challenges obviously in the aviation industry is not every airport and location is exactly the same. So sometimes there aren't one size fits all solutions, but certainly technology uh, is, is, is a big part of uh, helping us to try to solve uh, this issue, not only in the aviation industry, but in others. Okay, this next question is for Lorraine. Um, so about more than 15 organizations have signed the N MSD pledge to date. How many more will it take to make a big enough impact? Yeah, I'd love everyone to take it. So <laughs> I'm not gonna put any limits on that, but we are expecting uh, at least 100 or more by the end of this calendar year. I think that's very uh, realistic. We've talked to hundreds of companies and, and as we said, we just announced it today. These are some of the folks uh, that have come on this journey with us, so they were here to be able to to represent and sign um, in concert with us here today for the announcement. Uh, but we'll expect hundreds of companies to come on this journey with us. So I have a time for a few more questions. Um, so this question is also for Dr. Allred, and it's coming from Business Insider. So Professor Allred, Ohio State's University's SRI developed the lumbar motion monitor, a device that monitors the motions of a person's lower back and compares that data to a database to assess MSD injury risk. Why aren't these devices in greater use among employers? Well, um, the, the level of um, uh, additional effort it takes to get that a quantitative data uh, is something that companies often don't have the resources to be able to implement. But what I will say is that um, the LMM or lumbar motion monitor really was one of the first wearable sensors that was available for employees to work to monitor their activities. And as technology has improved, uh, so has the ability for um, you know, wearable sensors to collect data that's really important. You know, we have our, our watches and a whole host of other um, technology devices that uh, are allowing us in many ways to get some of that data. Some of those are uh, commercially available uh, as we're seeing. And so now we're inundated with a lot of information, just like uh, we were able to get quantitative accurate information from workers who were lifting as they were wearing the LMM. And so the, I think that's one of the, the big breakthroughs that we have here uh, using this technology and, and the science of what this data can tell us to uh, more accurately understand what the exposures are that lead to MSDs so that we can more accurately tackle those exposures and, and reduce them. Yeah, and if I could add to Gary, that that is one of the reasons 
that the MSD Solutions Lab will be looking at these new innovative technologies is because we don't always have um, the scale and scope within some industries to look at this, to get the data as Gary is representing that can help inform us where these technologies can be most useful. There are amazing advances in biometrics and sensors in, and as Gary just said, things that can, can track how your body's moving and what kind of stress you're putting on uh, for the operation that you're doing. We need to be able to share some of that, to run some experiments, to, to put them some things into practice, and then be able to help others who don't have the resources to do that understand how this, these technologies can really help them. So it's one of the core uh, functions of the MSD Solutions Lab. Okay, well, that concludes our Q&A session. There are no more uh, questions at the moment, so I'll just turn it over to Lorraine. Well, thank you all, and thank you for your very thought-provoking questions. This is just the beginning. Um, we're so glad that you joined us here for the announcement of the pledge. Hopefully, we can get you some resources so that we can get more folks on, on the journey along with us. This is the biggest workplace injury issue across industries, across workers, and we must do better than one in four humans on the planet experiencing one of these many times life-changing injuries. So please, the call to action today here is to sign the pledge. Come to us, as Paul said, at nsc.org, um, MSD pledge, or let us know if we can help you uh, be joining the cause here. So thank you for joining us, and we look forward to reducing MSDs. Thank you. Thank you.